Hey everyone, I'm Kara. Welcome once again to my workshop. Today, I'm trying to create a custom chapter. If you follow me on Twitter, you probably saw the poll I posted asking what video to do next. I left it up for about a day, and I came back to refresh it the next afternoon. Oh, fuck yeah. Starting out, I'll need to write some basic lore to help me enough with the designing process. The idea of a firstborn only chapter has appealed to me for a while now. I've got tons of primaris stored away in my pile of shame, but I don't give regular marines much of a chance to shine. I wanted to change that with this project. I wanted a chapter with a dark foreboding doom looming over them, an inevitable defeat hanging over their heads, but there's still a band of valiant fighters who won't submit to the threats in their system. In situations, they need to be smart and do all they could to stay alive and protect the citizens on their planet. I figured that one of their tactics could be to use bright sunsets and sunrises to their advantage for covering their advancements on enemy territory and encampments. Now that my bare bones law was written out, I wanted to get right into the design process. I'm starting with a software called Impcat. It's a cheap mobile app that allows you to import many different models and paint presets made by the wonderful community over on Reddit. This app is always helpful for testing and creating colour schemes, without spending anything on paints and minis, while saving you a bunch of time and money in the process. You can find a link to this app and the subreddit in the description below. It's a must-have for any hobbyists, both inside and outside of the Warhammer community. I'll need a colour scheme that will be easy to paint, but it will also need to contrast nicely, and partly fit in with the lore for the chapter and the tactics they use. For this, I used the sunrises and sunsets as a reference. I messed around with some bold colours from my references, and I tried to use paints I own. This helped me save money for the project, I didn't have to spend anything on extra paints. I didn't want to use more than three main colours for the scheme. Too many colours alongside a lot of accent colours would be too much to process and be a hard thing to look at on the tabletop. Also, less colours means less time painting. I tried the same scheme idea with a dark blue and a rich purple, trying to decide which one I like more. In the end, I settled on a darkish blue. I already have all these paints I need, and I felt it contrasted better with the orange than the purple did. I also wanted to try this scheme on a vehicle in Impcat before going ahead with testing, just to make sure that the scheme works well on larger models. I was quite pleased with the result of this, and decided to continue. I wanted to make a chapter symbol that would fit in with their colour scheme, and maybe symbolise their homeworld or tactics. I messed around with some various designs with my drawing tablet, throwing out ideas here and there, and just seeing what looks good to me. I kept simple with my designs, and used some assets from Google Images to help with an idea. To keep the symbol original and avoid anything copyright, I will go back and draw this chapter symbol myself. I just wanted to save time during the design process. It took me about an hour or so to come up with eight different chapter symbols, working with few colours and trying to avoid the scheme being an eyesore when painted. I took a screenshot of the Rhino tank I tested my scheme on previously, and used my drawing software to add my chapter symbol onto the side, just to get an idea of what it would look like on the model itself. I chose the four emblems I liked the most and added them onto the model also adding some basic grime and muck onto the model just to make sure the scheme worked with my colour choices. Once I decided which chapter badge I liked the most, I moved on to creating the rest of the heraldry and markings for the chapter. After a lot of time off camera working over this official chapter sheet, I turned it into this chapter sheet. I finished off all of the markings, symbols, and added anything different for the various classes in the chapter. Everything blanked out from the original sheet will be added in later on, but that might be in a future video. It was finally time to move on to the test models. I wanted to try multiple different troop types here, so I set out to do three minis in total. 
I took out my bits box and got to work picking out basic parts from my models. There are some semi-assembled troops in this box, and I decided to make use of some of those to save time in my building process. I'm also not fond of some of the posers, so I figured it's best used here instead of being used in my army where I wouldn't like it. I used Blu-Tac to dry fit the models together, and made sure that they look good in their posers with everything attached. I moved on to building them normally, just as I would any other model. It was nice working with firstborn marines again, because I've only been working with Primaris for a year now. After removing sprue markings, scraping mold lines, and sanding all the rough edges, I finally glued them together. It wasn't until I glued everything that I realised I hadn't drilled the gun barrels out, and I had to carefully go back and drill them out with the whole model, rather than just that part. I settled on a veteran sergeant, a battle brother assault marine, and a lieutenant for my testers. It gave me a broad range of schemes I'd chosen for the rankings. After building, I had to wait until the sun set before the wind outside had finally died down and I was able to prime. I decided to use a different type of undercoat on each model. For the veteran, I used a simple chaos black undercoat. For the lieutenant, a pure Mechanicus standard grey undercoat and then a Xenophil undercoat using both primers for the Assault Marine. I started on the Veteran first by dry brushing most of the model with Cantor Blue. This was to help me build up into dry brushing Macrag Blue for my main armour colour. You'll notice I changed my camera angle here. This was because my brush kept tapping against my boom mount and camera as I painted. After the McCrag blue was down, I finally washed over the whole mini with Drakenhof Nightshade to help bring the two blues closer together. Once that had dried, I switched to a smaller frayed brush and used that to dry brush on a highlight of Elytic blue. I made sure not to use too much, and I only wanted to capture the stark edges and flatter parts of the armour facing upwards. Once the main armour was done, I added all the paints I needed for the orange armour onto my wet palette. I took Mephiston Red and base coated all of the places that I wanted my orange to be. Any mistakes I made were quickly fixed up with my mix of previous blue colours. At this point I realised I accidentally painted the Mohawk part of the sergeant helmet red, and that only needs to be painted differently if it's a veteran sergeant. I quickly covered over my mistake with some blends of blue and just continued onwards. I covered over the Mephiston Red with Wild Rider Red, being a little more careful this time to avoid making mistakes. I chose this colour because it's the perfect mix of bright red and deep orange that my chapter needs. I gave the orange parts a very brief highlight with Uriel Yellow. As I was already working with orange colours at the time, I decided that this was a good time to start freehanding me veteran marking on the pauldron. I never freehanded this marking before, and I have little experience with it overall. I felt very happy with this outcome, even though it wasn't as neat as I would have liked it to be. I moved on to painting the rest of the mini. I covered the gun, joints, and vents with a bad and black. I added Zandri Dust in a Shabti Bone to my palette, using the Zandri Dust to paint over the Purity Seal on the lower right leg. While that was drying, I got started with Metallics, using Lead Belcher on the metal parts of the Grav Gun and Helmet. I then went back with a Shabti Bone and rapidly highlighted the paper on the seal, before switching to Retributor Armor and painted the skull on the backpack, and the banner emblem on the gun. I watered down a little of bad and black and used that to wash over the silver on the grav gun to add depth. Instead of wasting time and paint using my usual purples and pinks for the wax on the purity seal, I made use of the paints I already had on my palette and mixed up a similar colour to use instead. I used Caliban Green to set the undertone for the eyes. I fixed up a mistake or two and then started using Putrid Green to highlight the eyes, before finally using some Waystone Green just to tone down the highlight a little. I moved on to the Assault Marine. 
using two thin coats of Cantor Blue for the base coat. After applying Norn Oil to the whole mini and setting it down on the table, I got up and made myself a delicious Necron sandwich for lunch while I waited for it to dry. I came back and tried using a soft dry brush for my Macrag Blue, but it didn't seem to work very well, so I switched over to a tougher dry brush. For some reason, the chainsaw arm kept falling off while painting, and I had to paint that separately. Using a light oak blue, I placed down a final dry brush highlight, making sure to catch the armor facing upwards and make use of that original zenithal priming. This time, I tried using Mornfang Brown as my undercoat for the orange trims in Aquila. I dropped some Wild Rider Red and Fire Dragon Bright onto my palette, and then coated over all the brown parts with the red, trying not to make any mistakes as I went along. I mixed both my orange and red together to create a brighter tone, and then coated over the side and top parts of the pauldron trims in Aquila. This was to create a quick highlighted effect and add some variation to the colours. I repeated this on a smaller scale using just pure Fire Dragon Bright. Moving on to the freehanding again, I mixed Wild Rider Red and Mournfang Brown together and laid down the initial shapes for the assault marking on the shoulder. Much like before, I built up my colours over time and moved back and forth between my orange and my blue to keep the marking tidy. This wasn't exactly neat by the end, but it was good enough for me. I took out a band black and started painting all of the joints, casings, weapons and belts. I quickly grabbed up some Dark Reaper and used that to briefly highlight over most of the black parts, not bothering too much for neatness in the process. I applied Lead Belcher all over the parts of the model that needed to be silver, then added a wash of Norn Oil in those places. I moved on to the gold parts of the backpack and chainsword handle, painting those with Retributor armor. Finishing up with the eyes, I added some Caliban Green, Putrid Green and Uriel Yellow onto my palette and built up colour on the eyes much like before. Finally, with a tiny mix of yellow and orange, I added one more level of highlights to the shoulders and Aquila. That was the Assault Marine finished, with just one more to go. It was time to end the test models phase with the Lieutenant. I gave the whole mini a couple of swift, thin coats with Cantor Blue, keeping the whole coat consistently smooth. Then, using a 2 to 1 mix of Abaddon Black and Cantor Blue, I used a small detail brush in all of the recesses and the joints, ignoring the right pauldron and the helmet. After the panel lining was done, I took Abaddon Black and Skull White. I mixed them down to a dark grey and used that to base coat the helmet, shoulder and knee pad. I took my crag blue and used that to set down my first edge highlights over the whole mini, making sure to leave the lines thick enough to show beneath my next highlight. I wanted my highlights to stand out, so I used a light up blue and a little school white as my brightest edge colours for the mini, making sure to avoid fully covering over my previous highlights. After brightening my previous grey mix with a little more skull white, I began to edge highlight all of the grey armour. I then took pure Abaddon Black and went back to paint in the panel lining on these parts. Using Abaddon Black again, I base coated the gun casing and the spec scanner, taking extra care not to get any paint on any of the other parts of the miniature. I used Mephiston Red to paint the pauldron trims, Aquila, Knee Stripe and Mohawk. I took a 2 to 1 mix of Wild Rider Red and Mephiston Red, and used that to layer over it. Then, using the same mix, I highlighted over the Stripe and the Aquila, making sure to keep the base coat slightly visible on the Aquila in the recesses to help add depth. Afterwards, I brightened that mix again, and used that to add edge highlights. Then, moved on with Fire Dragon Bright, and added some final touches to the orange. I took Lead Belcher and painted over the gun metal, antenna on the Auspex scanner, and parts of the helmet. I also used Mephiston Red to paint over any wires and cables I could find on the model. I used my grey mix again to highlight the gun casing and Auspex scanner, then grabbed a little Retributor armour to paint the skulls on the helmet and the backpack. With the mini almost finished, I used Caliban Green to base coat the eyes and scanner screen. I used Putrid Green to add highlights onto the eyes and an interface on the scanner. I cleaned up any mistakes I'd made and called it a day.
I didn't care too much for the bases on these models, so I gave them a simple covering with Zandri dust. I waited for them to dry and then washed over them with a mix I made from various inks and water. I gave the base rims two coats of Abaddon Black, and finally they were finished. Finally, all of my test models were done, and I was very happy with the results. This video was more about designing the chapter than writing down the lore for me, but I do want to spread out the information of this chapter and kind of fill in that knowledge a bit. In a later video, I might go back and revisit writing out proper lore for this chapter with some of my friends. I hope you all enjoyed this. I certainly had fun making this video, and I had fun painting those test models as well. While I know the minis look a little bit like Ultramarines, just... Just ignore that. <laughs> just... <laughs> just don't point it out. Thank you all so much for watching through to the end. It means a lot to me. Um, if you'd like to support the channel, please consider subscribing, liking the video, and leaving a comment. I plan on making videos bi-weekly now, so please expect them every other weekend. I'll try my best to keep up with the schedule and keep fresh ideas coming in. Do you all ever sit there after you finish editing and realise that you never actually named your custom chapter? Yeah. Fuck! <laughs>